Our prayer is that we will get good success in the mighty name of Jesus. Some three weeks ago, we started with the book. And we said God is the God of book, of the book and of books. Hallelujah. That the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is the kingdom of education. If you hate education, you can't thrive in the kingdom of God. If you hate education, you can't thrive in life. And you will agree with me that most of us, we find ourselves in Sunderland. Why? Because of education. We need to be educated. Because knowledge is light. You can't do without knowledge. There are no mountains in this life. What you call mountain is your ignorance. What is keeping you down is your ignorance. And your speed, the speed, the velocity with which you travel in life depends on the amount of light, amount of knowledge that is available to you. When you are slowing down in life, it's because you are not absorbing knowledge. Are we together, brethren? And we, we moved forward further. We moved further by talking about the law. Two weeks ago, we were talking about the law. Amen. And that's talking about principles. That this life is designed, the world. In fact, the Bible says the world is sustained. He, he opposed the world by the word of his power. Hallelujah. Amen. The planet as it is, rotating and revolving around the sun, is based on what God has set out. Job said, were you there when God said, see, this is where you should stop. Don't go beyond this level. Hallelujah. That was the law that God said to the sea. You shouldn't go beyond this level. And since creation, the sea has not gone beyond its level. Are we together? Glory be to God. He sustains the world by the word of his power. Hallelujah. And we said so many things about the law. Amen. And we, say, we, 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 we talked about the fact that the law is what? Is unchangeable. And the fact that it does not discriminate. That if you are, your, your name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. And if you jump from a 10-story building, nature will not discriminate. It will not depend on your name. You will meet concrete justice. Hallelujah. Amen. If the president of Nigeria and the president of America and the president of France, if they climb three-story building and jump down, they will get down at the same time, depending on their weight. The law of gravity will not discriminate. Principles don't discriminate. Hallelujah. Amen. God set a principle on the surface of the earth. Whatever, whatever goes up must come down. No matter what you are, you have to come down. You can suspend it for some time, but eventually you will still come down. It's the law of life. When you go to the moon, it is reduced by 150. Amen. So God has put something on the center of the heart, probably somewhere around the heart core, that attracts everything towards the heart. And thank God for the law of gravity. If not for gravity, you will not be sitting down like this. You would have been blown off the surface of the earth. So God deliberately put uh, gravity there to hold you. Amen. Amen. And the same way he holds all things by his principles. If you want to live a good life in life, just follow principles. I tell people this, get to an environment where you get there. What are the principles of survival here? Hallelujah. You can't do without principles. Amen? Amen. And Jesus talked about so many principles in the Bible. He said it on the mount. He said it to the disciples. He said every time he was preaching, he was talking about the principles. In this kingdom of God, these are the way things work. If you do things this way, things will work for you. If you do it the other way, it will not work. And in the latter part of Matthew chapter 7, he said, He that listens to these principles and do what the principle is saying, it shall be like what? Like a wise man that built his house on a rock. He said, wind blows. Hallelujah. Amen. There will be tornado. And I will say this again, no matter who you are, fast for 100 years, wind will blow in your life. Rain will fall. You can't pray against it. It is part of life. It is part of the process. So if you are not being sustained by the word of his power, if your life is not based on principle, if your marriage is not based on principle, if your outlook of life is not based on, on principle of the word of God, it will blow you away. He said, rain falls and what wind blows, but if you are not sustained by the word of his power, you will crumble. 
And haven't we seen it so many times? When you don't, you have not laid the foundation of principles, when what you believe on is not based on the principle of God, no matter how mighty that blessing is, it will crush you. And I tell people this, even when I meet a wise person, if I spend five minutes, what principles am I able to derive from the thing that he has discussed with me? If you, let, let's imagine a situation where you suddenly find the geo by your side in a plane, six hours flight from Newcastle to um, Motala Mohammed Airport in Lagos. I know what some of you will say. Daddy, I'm broke. Will you pray for me? See, daddy will pray for you. What has he given you? A piece of fish. You will eat it, you will finish it. There are other questions you can ask daddy that can change your life forever. Hallelujah. You see, God always opens doors of opportunities. We have seen people who have come to this church, they hear beautiful messages, they do nothing with it. All they say after leaving this church is to condemn the church, to say bad things, to say, uh, talk about the bad things that have happened in this church. Hallelujah. And I've seen people just one Sunday. And years after, they are still talking to the pastor. Telling them about the one statement that he had. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be stupid. You will not be stupid in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And one of the important things we talked about last week is the fact that, see, let me tell you this. There is no success outside God. Don't let anybody deceive you. Whoever is saying, telling you that there is a kind of success that you can have beside God, the person is deceiving you. The earlier you realize this, the better. See, it has got nothing to do with age. I've been in this kingdom for a long time. I've seen 70 years old who are wiser than 70 years old. It has got nothing to do with age. It has got to do with principle. You say principle, you say this is principle. You build your life around it. You cannot regret because principles don't fail. The Bible says, see, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but the word of God stands the same. He said, man is like grass. And his glory is like flower. He said, flower will fade. Grass will wither. But what? The word of God stands sure forever. He said, forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly fixed in heaven. Nothing can change it. See, listen to me. You can seal your hearing after this. Anything you want to do, build it around the word of God. You can't regret it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something that will interest you. I said it last week. God wants to interact with you. He's excited to talk to you. I know this is where most Christians get it wrong. And let me tell you, this. So there are so many things to say. I don't know how we are going to do it now. So it just keeps coming. See, Revelation chapter 1 says, he has made us what? Kings and priests unto him. See, in the New Testament, you don't have to go to some pastors or some priests to tell you things about your life. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but it's for babies. You are a king, you are a priest of your life. I hope somebody is listening to me. See, he has made it so free that we all have equal access to him. You remember what happened to the veil in the synagogue? It got torn. The Bible says, Ida and Tita. Where? From the, from the top. God himself tore it. Bringing all of us to his presence. Now, nobody has more access to the other. What differentiates us is the knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. It is purely knowledge and nothing else. True knowledge shall be just be delivered. If you like, let them pour oil on you one million times everywhere. Go and swim in the swimming pool of oil. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you will still suffer. Is it possible for a Christian to suffer all through their life and go to heaven? Yes, this book says so. But is it possible to live the abundant life right here on earth and still make heaven gloriously? This book says yes. So it depends on you. You can be a Christian and all through your life, your shoes will keep shouting hallelujah. And you know what I mean by that. You can be a Christian even without sinning and bring a shame to the kingdom. One of these days we talk about this. John 1, 1 says, if you say that you are in the light, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> no, let's not go there because it could just distract us. But brethren, let's get understanding. So he wants to talk to you. And we said it last week. The only way he talks to you is through your thoughts, through meditation. There's no other way. Because somebody is here and you keep thinking that when God wants to talk to you, there will be a smoke. And we call your name on the mountain. Is that not what uh, Elijah was expecting? There was earthquake. There was storm. There was this. He said, God was not there. God was not there. God was not there. But then there was a still small voice. That was God. He talks to you through the still small voice. But you are so involved with things out there that you silence the still small voice. The choir sang here. The, the comforter is here. Oh, I wish everybody would. Sometimes you want to cry. And I'm serious. The comforter is here. When he was going, he said, as I'm going now, I'm sending another comforter. That name is Allo Paracletos. It means somebody of my own kind. The same person with me, just that his appearance is different from mine. That's what he meant. He said, he would teach you how, not some things. So why are you perplexed? Why are you dwelling in the valley of decision? He would teach you all. He didn't, thank God he didn't say some things. All things. Your finances, your marriage. That thing that you never knew anything, that problem that has been in the family since your great-grandfather, he will teach you. He's not a liar. He said, he will come. As I'm going now, he's coming. He came down in Acts chapter 2. When he came down, he has never gone up. And listen to me, if you are born again, he's right there within you. He said, we have the function. Hallelujah. Amen. It is of the Lord. You have it, you have it, I have it. The pastor does not have it specially. You have it. Even if you are a smoker, you still have it. But it's just that you are smoking him in there. And that is not helping you, brethren. You put God in a house, then you are sending smoke inside the house where God is. How will he help you in that situation? That's what is happening to some of you here. And some of you, you neglect him. He talks, you, you are not just in the, in, interested in what he's saying. And listen to me, he talks to you all the time. See, this is my message everywhere I go. I've been in churches, and people come with testimony after messages like this. This will not be a waste in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But it is the doer of the world that is blessed. Last week, we were talking about pharmacia. You remember? Uh-huh. People who went to God, they want to interact. So people realized that they could connect with the supernatural by chewing coca leaves, by chewing opium puppies. And of course, they, it transferred them to some... Have you listened to some reggae artists? After chewing those things, they become philosophers. They will be saying things beyond the ordinary. I told you last week, if you have taken it before, you will feel so good you forget about all your problem. Suddenly, you just believe that you are a mortal billionaire. Whereas you didn't have anything in your account. That's what it does. And like we said last week, when the effect wears off, you become worse than you were before you took it. That's the problem. I, it has got so many dangerous side effects. That's why God banned it. And God offered us a new way. Let's open our Bibles to Joel chapter 2, verse 28. He gave us a new way. You know, when Jesus came, he came with something new. Hallelujah. He, he rewrote the history of mankind. Hallelujah. Amen. And he began to redefine everything. He redefined marriage. He redefined prosperity. He redefined leadership. That's what he came to do. Hallelujah. Amen. In Joel 28, he said, it shall come to pass afterward. If somebody is listening to me, that I will do what? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How many flesh? Some flesh? Black flesh? Yellow flesh? Green flesh? Bluish black? He said, all flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, including you. 
I hope somebody is listening now. It's time, it's high time we stopped deceiving ourselves in the kingdom. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, including children. The baby that was just born today. Hallelujah. And your sons and your daughters will do what? They shall prophesy. Are you prophesying? Some of you, you are prophesying. You say you are prophesying. Stop prophesying. No time now. I'll tell you what prophesying is. Say, I will prophesy. Say, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. This is what he brought. He banished witch of Endor. This is the only way where I want to be seen by you. Through my spirit. That's the only legal way. Every other way is illegal. Is somebody listening here? So you interact with the supernatural in a better way with no side effects. This one, when you get there, wow, you see glory. Even if, you, if it fizzles out, kind of, you are still okay. But the other way, when it fizzles out, what happens to you? Do you know what that is costing the UK government every year? Over five billion pounds. Not million, billions. To sustain those people. To be okay. But God is saying, this one will cost you nothing. But faith in what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, the time is gone already. And we have not even started. So I don't know what we are going to do here. Hallelujah. Pastor Lord, what you say? Testimony, yes. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. Are we there? But as it is, let's read it together. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor hear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love. Nobody has seen it. So don't let anybody limit you to your past or to your present. God is telling you what I have prepared for you. God is not a liar. And this one is specific to you. I hope you are listening to me. He's not talking about some people. He's talking about, he said, ears has not heard. Eyes have not seen. No mind has conceived the glory that I have in stock for you. Let's go to the next verse. Are we there? He said, but God has done what? Has revealed them unto us. By what? By the comforter. By the alloparacletos. Hallelujah. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Hear the deep things. That is the only way. Look at Eleva and say, there, there, is no there is no other way. That is the only way. The only way. Say it like my, bro- like my grandmother. That is the only way. The only way. There is no other, way. no other way. See, when I was not born again, thank God for my life, my grandmother would appear to me in the dream. There was a time I was in the class. We were having pharmacology in the class. I was in the university then. I was not really getting serious then. Then my grandmother just appeared to me. She came in front of the class. Do you know how you feel when you see your grandmother facing your own class? And she called me my name. De Niro. My Boro. Listen to your lecturer. You understand? When she said that, it was like a nightmare. I woke up in my dream. And I was wise. I knew God was talking to me. I was not even born again. You see, God will use what you know to talk to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me, brethren. He wants to talk to you. He wants to show you glorious things. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call upon me. I will answer you. I will answer. And do what? And show. Do you know where the problem is? You want to see those things physically. You think what he's saying is, that, oh, the car is promising. I will see it. No, he will show, he will reveal it to your spirit. You will get it by meditation. That's what he's saying. I will show you. In this kingdom, we see with our spirit. We see with our mind. We don't see physically. I haven't started. Close your eyes.